Good morning. We're glad that you can join us on this most precious of all days. Our call to worship comes from the prophet Isaiah, written some two and a half thousand years ago. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. Tremendous words of promise that are ours today. Please join with us now on this journey to Pilate, the Roman governor's court, and then on to the soldiers in the yard and the priests in their taunting, and then the road to Golgotha and Christ's crucifixion. Would you join with me in a prayer? Let us pray. God, creator and friend, grant us open minds and open hearts when we recount these events that have changed our world forever, that have changed our world for good. His story. His story that may eventually be ours and everyone's story. We ask it through his holy name. Amen. Jesus stood before the Roman governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked. So you say, answered Jesus. But he said nothing in response to the accusations of the chief priests and the elders. So Pilate said to him, Don't you hear all these things they accuse you of? But Jesus refused to answer a single word, with the result that the governor was greatly surprised. At every Passover festival, the Roman governor was in the habit of setting free any one prisoner the crowd asked for. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus, Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to set free for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus called the Messiah? The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask Pilate to set Barabbas free and have Jesus put to death. But Pilate asked the crowd, Which one of these two do you want me to set free for you? Barabbas, they answered. What then shall I do with Jesus called the Messiah? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they all answered. But Pilate asked, What crime has he committed? Then they started shouting at the top of their voices, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that it was no use to go on, but that a riot might break out, he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am not responsible for the death of this man. This is your doing. The whole crowd answered, Let the responsibility for his death fall on us and on our children. Then Pilate set Barabbas free for them, and after he had had Jesus whipped, he handed him over to be crucified. Then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace, and the whole company gathered around him. They stripped off his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they made a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and put a stick in his right hand. 
Then they knelt before him and made fun of him. Long live the king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the stick and hit him over the head. When they had finished making fun of him, they took the robe off and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Oh, how deep the love of Jesus was and is, both for us today, but also for all humanity. As we consider his disgrace, the violence that was done to him and his humiliation. Let's now share in a classic hymn, a, a song about how deep his love is for each one of us. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine mixed with a bitter substance, but after tasting it, he would not drink it. I'd like to read a poem now to you. It's written by a man called Studdett Kennedy. He was a chaplain to the forces in the First World War. And this poem was written about 1915. I've taken the liberty to change a word. Uh, you'll pick it out. And I'm sure Studdett Kennedy wouldn't mind. When Jesus came to Golgotha, they hanged him on a tree. They drove great nails through hands and feet and made a calvary. They crowned him with a crown of thorns. Red were his wounds and deep. For those were crude and cruel days and human flesh was cheap. When Jesus came to Auckland, they simply passed him by. 
They never hurt a hair of him, they only let him die. For men had grown more tender, and they would not give him pain. They only just passed down the street and left him in the rain. Still Jesus cried, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And still it rained the winter rain that drenched him through and through. The crowds went home and left the streets without a soul to see. And Jesus crouched against a wall and cried for Calvary. One of the greatest composers of all time, Johann Sebastian Bach, was a deeply committed Christian man, and he's written some incredible music. We now sing a hymn that is written to one of his greatest pieces. They crucified him and then divided his clothes among them.
by throwing dice. After that they sat there and watched him. Above his head they put the written notice of the accusation against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then they crucified two thieves with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people standing there heard him and said, He is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up at once, took a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, put it on the end of a stick and tried to make him drink it. But the others said, Wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to save him. Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the army officer and the soldiers with him, who were watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and everything else that happened, they were really terrified and said, he really was the Son of God. It is finished, Jesus cried. It's often misunderstood. What he was saying is, it is accomplished. That great work of God, it is complete. It is finished. Our next song is a beautiful blend of an old traditional hymn combined with a modern song. Please join with me, if you can, in singing this. I hear the Saviour say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He watched it white as snow On a hill far away Stood And shame and 
that love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of the sinners was slain so I cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at Stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He was it white as snow So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Today is not a day for long sermons, but allow me just a few thoughts. This year, Easter comes at a time when world events have brought the most powerful political leaders and their nations to their knees. A microscopic viral bug has cost hundreds of thousands of people their lives. It has disrupted global travel and trade. It has cast a foreboding shadow over our world. However, the resilience, the self-sacrifice, and the goodwill and generosity of so many have brought hope, hope to nations, hope to communities, and hope to individuals in this country and in every country. As followers of Christ, on this Good Friday, it should not really come as any great surprise to us to be confronted with the reality that we are frail human beings. Nor should it surprise us when we're confronted by the reality of the fragility of our planet Earth. The suffering and injustice experienced by so many and that experience will go on for weeks and months. Some would say a world in chaos, a world out of control, a lost world. God's coming into the world in a crucified Galilean Jew. 2,000 years ago was an announcement to the world that God has not abandoned us, nor will he ever. He hasn't finished with us. Christ crucified, perfect sacrifice, forgiveness of sins, giver of power over evil and death. Surely this the most significant event in the history of humankind. God's demonstration 
that he is alongside of us. He suffers with us. He is with us in our fears, in our dying, in our anxiety. In Jesus, the Creator suffered the agony of human abandonment, traumatic bodily pain, and ultimate humiliation. The Creator's love was so great for our world, for our nations, and for each one of us. That is the message of Easter. That he reaches to us, is alongside of us, is the empathetic one with us. Especially in our greatest moments of need. The cross of Jesus is God's forever promise. His forever promise that he is with us to the end of time especially with those who are exhausted, those who are frightened, those who are lonely, and those who are lost. I pray God's great outpouring of that amazing love for you and for your family and for your communities. Amen. Let's pray together. Loving God, your coming to us in Jesus so long ago causes some of us to be puzzled, to be mystified, confused by what happened. But Lord, we know over the centuries that many people have found great hope, even though they find themselves right on the brink of disaster and even death. But they have found great hope in the fact that Jesus died for them and for the world. That the power of death has been smashed. That all that blocks our relationship with you potentially is taken away. We thank you that that is your gift to us. May we lay our hands upon it. May we allow your love to transform ourselves and our world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A benediction as you go. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the to Calvary Tried by sinful men Torn and beaten man Never